Hello, this is Levi from Masculine Intuition Readings, and um, I'm back, 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 back again because I got this little baby in this week, and it's so gorgeous. Um, it is the Dream Visions Tarot by Emma Zhang. Um, it's a gorgeous little deck. Let's see what's what it reads on the back. Enter the ethereal universe of Dream Vision Tarot. Illustrated by Emma Zhang, yes. Awaken your inner knowing with 78 cards designed to unlock your visionary power. Meet, meet the cosmic forces alive inside. So this is just uh, an immaculately designed tarot deck, which um, kind of deviates from the types of decks that I'm usually attracted to. Uh, it's kind of interesting, actually. It reminded me of the Mystic Mondays, but the Mystic Mondays that I wanted Mystic Mondays to be. So this deck is Mystic Mondays, but better. <laughs> um, I hate to break it to y'all, but um, yeah, I um, think Mystic Mondays is cute, but it's also a little basic. And this just goes a smidge, 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 smidge deeper. As you can see, the lighting is really insane. It's really terrible. So I am sitting very far away from the camera so you guys don't catch all the shade. Uh, the box is really pretty. Like I said, look at that design. Uh, there's some designs on the sides as well. You know, it's just freaking amazing now. There's no guidebook. Um, there is this neat magnetic flip top box. There's some art right here. There's a little text right here that is a little bit difficult to read. Now let me get the cards out. Uh, and then there's a ribbon and there's some really cute design inside. All right, so the box is fine, you know, get it, live it, love it, breathe it. Uh, the cards are amazing. Let me show you the gilding. The gilding is really good. It's very holographic. Uh, I don't really care about gilding. I'm not a gilding slut at all. Uh, if this would have been non-gilded, I would have been fine. Uh, stuff like gilding um, makes a deck really expensive to produce. Uh, so I'd rather have a slightly cheaper version without the stupid gilding, but it is gorgeous. Look at that. The cardstock quality is not the thickest, um, let's see, it's, you know, it's not the thickest, but it's, but it's serviceable, it's good. Um, the backs are gorgeous, look at that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can zoom us in even a little bit more. So we're gonna go card by card, and uh, the first card is already one of my favorites, The Fool. Um, I adore it because um, I actually downloaded a, a um, a version of this image that I can zoom in and that is actually a little like harlequin uh, on top of that mountain which I'm not too fond of uh, but especially zoomed out like this you kind of get the vastness of the mountain the open energy of the colors like this deck is very very colorful um, it kind of has that pastel crayon kind of feel and I just did a word so yeah great fool like I'm not gonna go into the symbolism of the major arcana too much because it is quite um, it is very readable which is good it's not nothing groundbreaking but the design choices that Emma has made are impeccable like honestly this deck really has an almost like an alien quality to it uh, adore the magician. I love how most of the figures in the deck are really very gender fluid, very non-binary, very gender fuck. Um, this high priest says the light side, the dark side, the crescent moon, holding the Torah that's almost translucent. The veil is there. It's covering half her face. Like so much symbolism there. Um, the Empress, I don't particularly care for. I mean, it is really, really pretty. Um, you can really get lost in the imagery if you want to. Um, I, but I just don't really care that much about Empress cards in general. Um, but I do like Emma's take on it. So I do like that the 
the, the baby inside of the of the belly, inside of the womb is almost glowing, as you can see, so that's really good. Emma knows how to work her procreate, like, really well. I have yet to unlock this level of procreate. <laughs> the Emperor, kind of similar to the Empress, I do like this one a little bit better uh, because of the color contrasts, but it is a little bit more standard. And then we go into a really interesting one, which I really like. The Hierophant. I love this Hierophant. It's really good. It's really cool. Uh, it's very much that um, almost high priest vibe, which is, is really something we don't see that often. Uh, I think it's gorgeously designed. Sometimes the, the line work is very soft. The, the shapes are very soft, and this one it's a little bit harsher, so yeah, I do like that. Hierophant is always a really interesting card to me. And then a card that not everybody uh, on the Kickstarter was too happy about. She changed it a couple of times, I believe. I don't really uh, track all those Kickstarter things. I think a lot of backers can get really annoying, kind of like claiming ownership over the work of the creator. Which, you know, you can't. You just backed it. You just, that's what Kickstarter is. You give people money uh, to do shit. And, you know, even if they don't fulfill it, you know, it's it's not a pre-order website. Um, so, yeah, I do kind of like it. Um, is it my favorite? Not really. I do like the fact that you can't really tell which gender each one of the figures here is. They're... Heads, their noses are kind of touching, their hair is kind of touching above, creating this heart shape. It's kind of cute. Not my favorite, but kind of cute. The chariot, however, is amazing. Like, uh, Emma is really good with creating really interesting silhouettes for her illustrations. So I do adore that you get these two horses here, but you kind of have to Oh, I've had a pretty rough day at work, so I'm yawning a little, but you, uh, but you kind of have to um, look closely. They're not instant. So this is not a deck where you, you know, get your quick read in. You kind of have to take in the artwork. I do love this. This is probably one of the most exciting uh, chariots I've seen in a while, so that's pretty cool. The strength card, albeit very standard, it is a woman with a lion, is so great. Emma, I love this strength card. The colors are so bold and striking, like honestly. Uh, and you know, like I said, like they do all belong, very much belong to the same deck, but there's very much this sense of you can tell that each card got a different approach. No, nothing is repetitive in this deck. There's no obvious like, oh, this is kind of a filler card. She didn't know what to do with this one. No, each card is different and amazing. And I don't even think this hermit shows up that well on camera. It's w way more intense in real life. But we kind of get this adorned cloak right here. I won't Put my hands towards the cards too much but i do kind of have to point uh we see that white beard uh it's very ethereal very alien-esque which is really cool it's a really interesting deck um wheel of fortune card really simple design but very striking uh, really, uh, I mean, you know, like there's only so much you can do with a Wheel of Fortune, but I really love, I would love to have this design on a t-shirt, wouldn't lie, like, uh, the illustrations are very fashion forward, so, wouldn't be surprised if this deck gets a lot of hype in the future, wouldn't be surprised if this gets picked up for mass market, because it is that good, um, you know, it would kind of suck if, a publisher like Hay House picks this up because I feel like they should be more invested in seeking out creators that are kind of working on decks and then offering them deals rather than having them go through the whole Kickstarter process, seeing it be successful and then going, 
oh, hey, we kind of want to publish your deck. No, it's your job to scout the talent, not the other way around, not have the talent do all the hard work. Um, Justice, not my favorite. I uh, don't really have a whole bunch of stuff to say about it, but you know, it look, all of the cards, like when I say not my favorite, I don't mean I don't like this card, but there's just, all of the cards are just so good that I you just know that there will be another favorite right around the corner, which is actually what's happening right now. Because this Hanged Man, like even with the color palettes, they're so balanced, they're so nuanced, uh, they pop, yet they also have this, like I said earlier, that ethereal dream-like quality. Gorgeous hangman. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Look at me, I'm starting to sound like um, someone someone from the Bronx, even though I um, am from the Netherlands and not from the Bronx. Gorgeous. Death card, kind of standard design-wise, we have seen this before. The skull with the snake and the rose, however, like the composition, everything. This is really good art. And people say that, you know, digital art is an art. I will kindly encourage you to take a lesson because like, again, this temperance card, look at that. Look at that composition, look at that imagery. This is color alchemy, y'all. Like, colors are so intense. Oh. All right. The Devil, uh, usually the Devil card can be a favorite of mine. And once again, although I do love the composition, it's not my favorite. Actually, wherever uh, Emma kind of deviates from the Rider Waite Smith standard, that's where this deck comes alive the most to me, uh, in my honest opinion. But you know, uh, ever since there's so many people that are like, uh, there's no lion in the strength card, so this is a bad deck. Or people that are like, there's no shackles in the devil card, so this is a bad deck. As long as people like that are around and ruling the tarot YouTube sphere, um, you know, artists are probably gonna, <laughs> gonna budge, but however, I, I do love the silhouette. I just wish wish the shackles would have been out of the picture. I think it would like be a little bit prettier composition wise. But you know, like I said, no, there is no ugly card in this deck. Um, there is no bad design in this deck at all. Uh, the tower, probably one of my favorite towers ever. Honestly, I mean, look at it. It's a very powerful, strong, stable tower. That's not lightning, in my opinion. It's almost like a lighthouse calling out, but then it's um, a lighthouse that is not there because it's it's see-through. Um, so it's kind of a mirage leading to your demise. The demise that is necessary. So I do love that it's, you know, it's like I said, where it deviates from the writer Wade Smith, that's where this baby shines. Uh, for example, with this, the star card. Um, I really adore it. I'm getting a rejuvenated, cleansing feel of this. I love the night sky behind it. Uh, the shadow work, the line work. Um, it's just so good. All right, another favorite of mine, which a lot of people may think is kind of weird, but I don't even know if it will show up on camera uh, the way it shows up in real life, is the moon. And you see this very, very, very tiny moon over there. Very tiny, and then we see these and these mountains kind of, and the card is very foggy, like even even the, the title right there is kind of blurry, and the number right there is kind of blurry. But I kind of love that because the moon is all about seeing through the illusions, hopes, dreams, illusions, fears. Uh, and the only thing that's crisp about the card is the actual tiny moon itself there in the background, waiting for you to go through that water to reach it. It's almost poetic. Another one I'm kind of meh about. Uh, oh, or another one. Look at me. Look at, look at me. It sounds like I... There, like, there's a lot of cards that I'm meh about, and I'm not. Uh, but I don't really like the Sun uh, card in this deck, although I do appreciate that there's no 
naked muscle babies on horses. Um, I think the color palette is a little bit busy, however, it does really express the meaning of the sun. So that's that's great. Um, the Judgment card is is kind of right away at Smithian, however, I do love it. Um, I love that there's no angels in this, uh, even though I love angels, but um, I do kind of feel, like I said, almost like this is a UFO, almost like sucking these, these people up a little bit. <laughs> It's very alien-esque, this deck, and I adore that. I adore it. Um, the world card is amazing. Uh, once again, where Emma deviates from the writer with standard, typical writer Wade Smith depictions, that's where the, the art in this deck shines. Uh, um, but once again, like I said, there will be a lot of YouTubers that are, that are gonna be like, uh, the four beasts of the four elements are not in the corners of the laurel. So this is a bad deck and it's not, it's actually a great deck. Um, where do I even begin? Like you can kind of see uh, that, um, that snake is kind of starting from that person. Um, you know, and it's that snake, that Ouroboros feeling. Uh, it is a snake, isn't it? Let me check real quick. Well, I don't know what it is, but it reads to me as a snake that's kind of emerging from this alien person thing, uh, but also is coming back into it, and which is kind of how I read the world card because, you know, the world card is the completion, but also it was always there, you know? It was already complete within you, it ju you just needed to manifest it. So I do really get that, that feeling from this card. So that was the whole major arcana. Now let's go through the minors a little bit more quick. Um, they are gorgeous though. Like I even like, it's almost like I like the minors even better than I like the majors. So we have the Ace of Cups. Then we have the Two of Cups, which is, which, which is cute. Uh, we do kind of see that uh, these, the, this meet cute of two energies meeting. Uh, then we get the Three of Cups. And this deck is pretty pip-ish. I am gonna do it card by card because it's gonna get messy with all the color palettes. The deck is pip-ish, but it is illustrated for all the pip haters out there. Um, so yeah, that was one, two, three. Uh, four of Cups, really interesting, really interesting depiction. Uh, she's holding three, the fifth is on top of her head, she's balancing it, she's in a meditative state. Um, and then what I do love for all my numerology lovers out there, the fives are kind of difficult in each suit and I adore the way she illustrated this. So all the fives are kind of this difficult tra transition and uh, I have never seen a five of cups prettier than this. Uh, my ultimate, ultimate favorite Minor Arcana card, minus the Quartz in this deck, is uh, the Six of Cups. Look at that! Playful, uh, emotionally healing, uh, you know, after that difficult transition, we're being nurtured, we're being healed to move on to something better emotionally. And you can feel that energy emanating from, from the art. Uh, amazing. Uh, seven of Cups. Pretty cool. Let me give you guys some time to take a look. It's it's nice. It's it's sweet. Um, eight of Cups. I do kind of love how we're getting that perspective. Normally we see the Eight of Cups person from the behind. Now we kind of see them from the front and we kind of see what it is that they leave behind, but not really, um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not my favorite. It's gorgeous, but it's not my favorite. It does really convey the Eight of Cups emotion though. So, so that's pretty great. Nine of Cups, once again, quite cute. It's not my favorite, uh, but it's cute. And then we have the Ten of Cups. Perfect list, celebration, celebrate good times, come on. Champagne Tower feelings, adore it. And then the Quartz, because the Quartz is where this deck really, really 
really shines. Um, so we get the Page of Cups, <laughs> adorable with the little fishies. I mean, love it. Then we get the Knight of Cups, and the Knight of Cups is so beautifully drawn. Oh man, I adore it so much. It's probably one a contender for one of my favorite quartz. I really do like all the quartz, actually. The court cards are um, my uh, my absolute favorite parts of this deck. The Queen of Cups, gorgeous, and the King of Cups, also gorgeous. I love how he's emerging from the water, holding his cup in his hand. <sighs> Amazing. And I'm getting very much getting. Grace Jones vibes uh, from a lot of these, a lot of these quartz. So we get the Ace of Wands, um, really nice. Uh, the, the, the design in the wand suit is a little bit more minimalistic, which I don't mind at all. The Two of Wands is another one of my favorites out of the minors. I think this is probably one of the prettiest depictions of the Two of Wands I've ever seen. Really gorgeous, entering different realms. Three of Wands. Nice. Four of Wands, kind of getting that stability, that kind of getting that feeling of home. And then we go back into the fives, which are a little bit, like I said, a little bit darker. We do kind of get uh, some turmoil. Uh, you know, they're kind of getting rowdy, you can tell. Then we get the six, you know, where we are, you know, rising above that situation and where we are victorious. Then we get the seven, which is really neat, actually. You know, they are kind of balancing all of this at once, being very successful at it. Then we get the eight, uh, which is very RWS-esque. Uh, which I don't mind because I do love the Eight of Wands from the RWS. I do adore it. Uh, once, again, once again, the composition, the coloration, the shading, everything is so on point. The Nine, you know? The Nine is where you're like, wow, you're strong. You've managed to hold on to this for that long. Freaking amazing. And then we get the Ten, you know? where everything's about to collapse. However, you're, you're gonna make it through. <laughs> Adore that. Now let's head into the quartz. The Page of Wands, absolutely adorable. Look at that. Look at that. Look at those colors, guys. The Knight of Wands. Uh, amazing, amazing composition. Really, really awesome. It's almost like his hair is on fire. Uh, the Queen. The Queen of Wands, uh, you know, with the black cat, big cat, because if the Queen of Wands doesn't have a black cat, it's a bad deck. Um, it, which is not true, but it, it does look gorgeous. The black cat does look gorgeous, so I like it. And then finally, uh, the King of Wands. Uh, really, really intense fire energy. So yeah, uh, then into the swords. The swords suit is a little bit darker as usual. So that's the ace. And then we get the two. I mean, look at that. It's gorgeous, stunning. She's not even blind folded. There is a blind uh, in front of her. And she's not even holding these swords. These swords are almost translucent because they are the element air, right? Get it? Get where, get where I'm going? Uh, you can tell that with most of the swords in here. It's all in your mind. Uh, then we get the three of swords. Uh, you know, we get the kind of Rider Waite Smith-esque piercing of the heart. Although, um, a little bit like more fun. I like this a lot. And then we get the Four of Swords. Sometimes I do wish she wouldn't have put the, 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 the suit numbers in text on here. 
Sometimes I wish she just would have kept it off because it's very obvious how many of each element are in a um, are in a card. However, you know it's her deck; she can do what she wants. I adore this four. Um, like it's literally calming me just looking at it. Like time for a mental break. <laughs> I could use one. Then we get the five. Mm which I do find very interesting because we see these figures at the bottom and they're kind of like crying, weeping, and then we see this huge hand picking up two of the swords. You know, like where you're in such an, where you're so intense in an argument where you literally, you know, where you're kind of like having this argument but you're completely destroying, destroying the other person. And you're feeling victorious about it but you know after like five minutes of them crying you're like well, maybe i've been a bit harsh right uh, the six gorgeous getting also getting kind of monument valley vibes from this deck kind of getting journey vibes from this deck if you're familiar with those video games you'll know what i'm talking about Really gorgeous. We're going to release this and let you go into the light and let you pass on through to better times. I love the nurturing energy of the sixes. I think the sixes are a little bit, get a little bit lost in the mix sometimes, but they are gorgeous cards. Uh, the seven is interesting. Does it really depict, ooh, I'm stealing something. I'm deceiving someone. Not necessarily. Um, but is it a gorgeous image? Yes. And do images always have to have that exact same meaning? No. Especially with the sevens, I kind of read them numerologically where I kind of tie them in with the major arcana. So the sevens to me are all about agency regarding that element. So taking control of your thoughts and your ideas and your communication. And that does seem to be conveyed here. So this is very much a Levi deck. It really fits the way I read my cards mostly. Then we get the eight. Uh, another very misunderstood card, I feel, in the tarot. Because to me, uh, eights, strength, are all about strength. <laughs> Having the strength to... Uh, uh, to, to do whatever it is that needs to be done. And in that eight, we kind of get that sense of being bound, right? That eight of swords. But that, that lady in the Rider Waite Smith card, or nor here, she's not bound. She's not bound at all. She's choosing to be there. She's choosing to kind of recalibrate herself, uh, you know, to, to be able to, to reach out and get into like a better place. It, it, it ain't nobody bound like it's it she this is not even a shackle there's a, this this person could break free when could slip out of those shackles whenever they wanted to but they're there for a cause so yeah just wanted to get that out there then we get the nine typical uh nine of swords also the nine like this start starting to turn into a tarot lesson but to me the nine is tied into the hermit so for me that is actually kind of turning inward with your thoughts and your and, and, and your ideas. Kind of time to go into hibernation mode and kind of mull things over a little bit. I love the way that this deck is allows for me to read it like that. So that's really interesting. And I and I can read typical writer Wade Smith style, but I love that this deck is kind of pip-ish, leaving options open for readers that have different styles yet still kind of conf con confirms the Rider Waite Smith meaning. So it's, it's interesting, it's really interesting. Then we head into the page. The, the Court of Swords is really awesome. The Knight. Um, yeah. The Queen. Amazing, like, wow. She is that bitch. Wait a minute, like, what I love about this Queen of Wands is, uh, about this Queen of Swords, she is, you know, she is that bitch, bitch, but she is nurturing that sword. She is polishing it because when she's ready to strike her blow, 
she wants her sword to look immaculate. I love that. Uh, and then the King of Swords, which is, is totally Grace Jones. I mean, come on. This is Grace Jones. And he's the boss. So, yes. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And the pentacles are really, really nice as well. Um, this is, uh, look at how vibrant that is, you guys. The ace, gorgeous. The two. Two of pentacles used to be my stalker card. Three of pentacles. Love that. They're working together. They're flowing together. There is, abundance is growing sweetie abundance is growing the four of pentacles also looks amazing kind of dull color wise but i do get why because the fours are not that exuberant the fours are all about structure about a little bit of rigidity even almost so keeping your belongings to yourself frugality adore it so that's how much thought went into this deck even the color choices, it would have been very easy for this artist to just have a palette, impropriate, and keep reusing that for each suit. No, they did some color magic here. There's nothing else I can tell you about it. The Five of Pentacles, now that's despair right there. The Six, and this is very much the person that's on the receiving end, the beggar that is... Is it though? Or are there? Let me let me check. Don't want to be the fool. Hmm. This is interesting. It's, it's kind of a grim take on the card. So don't know if this shows up, but at the bottom, right here and right here, you can kind of see hands begging for money. But this figure, don't know if it look. Don't know if that figure looks like it's gonna give them it. However, you know, probably will. But they are kind of literally weighing their options like am i gonna share my wealth with these people or not mm -hmm. you know the seven kind of cute yeah it, it's sweet do i adore it no but it's it's a nice illustration it's neat um the eight which is very much that honing your craft, <laughs> finding the strength within to, to get things to be as perfect as they need to be. Like, it's kind of like she's etching something out of this, out of this disc that she's holding. And another one of my favorite miners, uh, the nine. I adore this nine. Uh, the, the little bird uh, that, that she's holding, uh, it's almost cubistic <laughs> in style. Uh, there's something very, very alien-esque, new age, late 70s, early 80s illustration style era thing going on right here, which I adore. In the whole deck, by the way. And then the 10. And I'm really glad that we don't have an uh, intergenerational family on it. <laughs> because I'm kind of over that. I mean, this is just some rich, abundant nature energy flowing in and out of the picture, and I adore it. Okay, so the last court, last but not least, because this court is incredible. We get the Page of Pentacles. We get the Knight of Pentacles holding on to his pentacle very tightly. Um, really, really intense image. Uh, it's almost like he is like preparing for whatever is going to happen. And then the coolest, the coolest queen, the queen of pentacles, I'm getting very much getting Mother Earth, tribal, African, lip ring energy from this. Oh man, like, and the little bunny is here. Can you see it? It's right here. I love it. <laughs> but I do like it a lot. Because you need the little bunny. Otherwise, it's not a good deck. And then we get the King of Pentacles once again. A lot of the kings having this really awesome androgynous Grace Jones energy. Uh, did I already show you the backs? These are the backs. 
Yay. Now, I'm really glad that I got this deck. Uh, I'm gonna be working with it a lot. Uh, this has been quite a long video, but I wanted to take my sweet time. Um, thank you for watching and